you invested $7,000 for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest, how much money did you earn on this investment? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator and also feel free to look up whatever formulas you need to look up for this problem. And I'll go ahead and give you a bit of a hint. You're going to need to understand a formula about compound interest. And you need to be very careful here because there's different uh, formulas when it comes to working with compound interest. But of course, I'll explain all of this in the solution. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then of course, I'll fully explain how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so just one more time, so you go to your local bank or uh, financial inst uh, institution, and you're saying, hey, I have $7,000, right? You already made that money from your job, or maybe someone gave this to you as a gift, but uh, you have the $7,000, and you want to invest it for 10 years, or you intend to invest it for 10 years at a rate of 5% annual compound interest. So the question is what? How much money did we earn on our investment? And you got to be very careful here in terms of what the question is asking. But uh, let's get into this problem. And as I promised, we need a formula. And there's different formulas uh, when it comes to compound interest. And this is the one that you need to have because we're talking about annual compound interest. In other words, we're compounding uh, the interest being applied to this investment is happening annually. Okay, so in other words, right here, annual compound interest. We could have quarterly or biannually, or we can even have continuous compound interest, and those uh, require different formulas. So this is kind of the most basic um, formula when it comes to compound interest or annual compound interest. So hopefully. Uh, use this form. Even if you used another formula, uh, and if you know if you knew how to work with that formula, you still should be able to uh, figure this problem out. But this is a formula that you should uh, understand if you want to work with compound interest. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We have a is equal to p times one plus r. All this to the t. And we have some sort of variable in the exponent uh, uh, location here, or the exponent spot, uh, meaning that this is an exponential function. Okay, so let's uh, talk about what uh, each of these variables uh, mean. Okay, so let's start off with P here. P is the principal. That's the amount that you have before you even invest, right? So you worked really hard, you know, uh, saved up your money, and you have $7,000. That's your money to invest. That's the principal amount. Now, after this investment, you're going to end up with a return, hopefully, right? And that total return is A. Okay, that's how much you're going to have in your account after a set amount of time of investing. So again, this uh, principal amount is the money you already you have. You go to your financial institution after a set period of time, uh, that investment grows to this amount, which is A. Now let's talk about this uh, other variable here, T. That is our time in years. So this particular formula, the time is in years. So if you were talking about days, you would have to convert that those days into years. So you got to be very careful about the units of measure here. And of course, uh, the principal and the amount can be whatever, uh, you know, currency that you want. I'm going to be using dollars. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about R. R is the interest rate. Okay. So that's what R is. And in this particular problem, it's 5% annual compound interest. And the key here is that we need to express this interest rate as a decimal. So 5% as a decimal, how do we go from a decimal, I'm sorry, a percent to a decimal? Well, easy, all we have to do is divide by 100 or just move that uh, decimal point over two places to the left, so that's 0 0.05. Okay, so basically, this is the formula, and what do we have? Well, we have the time, right? That's 10 years. We have the interest rate that is uh, 5%. We have our principal amount, which is 7,000, and with all that information, we can figure out uh, what our investment it will be worth after uh, this period of time. 
But if you're asked to solve for t, okay, uh, in other words, we're looking for the variable in the exponent spot, well, this particular problem would require the use of logarithms. So uh, when it comes to compound interest problems or exponential function problems, uh, there's the various levels of it. So this particular level of math could be something that, you know, um, those of you that are like in a basic algebra one course should be able to handle. But if you're solving for this variable t here, you may have to be like in an algebra two course because you typically don't uh, study logarithms you know, in Algebra 1. That's what we need in order to solve for T. Just a little quick comment uh, there because some of you may be looking to learn how to solve compound interest problems and uh, you're going to be solving for the variable in the exponent spot. So you need, you know, more math power, more math skills. But let's go ahead and get into the rest of this problem. And uh, now that we understand what the formula is and what, uh, you know, um, the variables stand for, we could just kind of just look through the problem. We invested or you invested $7,000. Well, that's our principal amount, $7,000 uh, for 10 years. Well, our time is 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. So our rate is 5%, but as a decimal, that's 0 0.05. So we can calculate uh, the uh, total amount uh, earned or the total amount of this investment after 10 years and then we could take the difference to figure out how much we earn so let's go ahead and do that right now now let's go ahead and plug in all the um, values for these respective variables so again p here is seven thousand dollars that's our principal amount our uh, rate okay our annual uh, compound interest rate is five percent but but we got to use a decimal so that's 0 0.05 a decimal value for that percentage uh, 10 is going to be 10 years. Remember this time, it's got to be in years. Got to be very careful there. So we have everything here. So we have 7,000 times 1 plus, uh, 1 plus 0 0.05, all this taken to the 10th power. So the first things first, remember, we got to keep all this basic stuff in mind, like the order of operations, PEMDAS, right? So we have to go to P or parentheses first right here. So what's inside those parentheses? Well, we got to add 1 plus uh, 0 0.05. Of course, that's going to be 1.05. So that is our first step. Now, what is our next step? E powers, right? So now we got to take 1.05 to the 10th power. Now, you'd be surprised as a teacher, even at the Algebra 2 level, I have seen this mistake a million times where I've seen students take 7,000 and then multiply by 1.05, for example. They're doing multiplication for powers, okay? So you got to be very careful. Got to keep the basics uh, in mind. So we have to do this first. So uh, 1.05 to the 10th power. So to figure this out, just in case you don't know how to do this, you got to make sure you know how to use your calculator. So it's either going to be like a carrot key like this or a y to the x or x to the y key, some sort of function like that. But make sure you understand how to find powers in your calculator. But when we take 1.5, uh, 1.05, excuse me, to the 10th power, we're going to get 1.628 or something or the other. But I'm going to round it off to 1.63. And now finally, we can multiply by 7,000 and our amount is $11,410. Okay, so we invested $7,000 for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. And uh, our investment is worth... $11,410. But the question was what? The question was, you got to be very careful here, how much money did we earn? Okay, so we didn't, you know, we already had that $7,000. The investment didn't uh, earn that uh, for us, right? So what we made on the investment, we have to go down here, is we'll take this amount, the total amount, subtract away from our principal. So we made $4,410. Okay, so hopefully this all made sense. Now, if you are studying compound interest, it all depends on what level of math you're in, right? So again, a problem like this would be like a basic algebra problem. But uh, for those of you that are in more advanced math, like college algebra, algebra 2, or pre-calculus, uh, there is definitely more sophisticated type of compound interest problems that you, uh, you know, will be studying. Now, if you need help beyond this, check out my math courses. If you're in Algebra 2, I teach you, you know, more advanced compound interest problems or exponential growth and exponential decay 
uh, proms and those um, courses, all my courses. If you're in pre-calculus, you can go there. Uh, if you're in Algebra 1, you'll see these type of problems. But whatever you do, if you're studying some, anything in math, whether it's compound interest, systems, equations, doesn't make a difference, make sure you get the help you need to understand. The worst thing you could do is hope that it's all going to get better all on its own. But anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.